Hi, Lou here, and I'm going to talk about putting more in the hands of the players in a tabletop game, and also in a video game, perhaps. There are two philosophies in games. One is what I call general manager and the other coach. Now, if you're familiar with professional sports teams, a general manager is in charge of acquiring players, whether it's through purchase or trade or developing them from youth. The general manager gets the players. The coach, on the other hand, takes the players that he's given that had been acquired by the general manager and gets the best out of them in the actual play in the games. Well, this kind of philosophy can be applied to tabletop games or video games as well. For example, you can have a player draw cards or you can use some kind of drafting. In Ticket to Ride, for example, you have a combination of both. There are three cards, as I recall, face up, and then there's a draw pile. A player can choose one of the face up cards, in which case everybody else knows what he's chosen, or she, or the player can draw from the deck, and only he or she knows what's been drawn. But enabling the players to choose the card gives them a greater feeling of control than if they just have to draw. It takes more time, but it can be worth it. Now, another version of this is where the player buys a card and may engage in auctions with other players who also want that card. I have a uh, stock market game that's quite unusual that originally had the special powers cards in the deck where players would draw them as things went along. That was changed by suggestion to where players, those, those cards are taken out of the deck and some of them are turned face up at the start of each round and players then can place tokens on those cards to indicate that they want to buy them. Each card has a price. And if more than one player wants to buy the same card, then there's an auction. That gives the players a greater feeling of control. It takes a lot longer, but it's still quite a short game, so that's all right. In general, when modeling is uppermost in your mind, then the coach method is going to be better as a designer because you give the player what he's got and he does the best with it. If you give the players a lot of choices, you may get away somewhat from what you've modeled unless in the actual real life event that you're modeling, the participants have a lot of control by being able to do things like drafting. Now, there are other examples of this. Uh, for example, you can have dice rolls that affect everybody, or you can have dice rolls that affect individuals. And if the dice rolls affect everybody, in some sense, you've put more into the hands of the players than otherwise. And players tend to feel that that's more fair or whatever it is. Now, there are games where you have what appear to be putting things in the hands of the players, but they still may be guessing games. Um, there are lots of different possibilities, and I've already run over my normal time, so I'm not going to discuss it anymore. The point here is for designers to decide how much they want players to act like general managers and how much like coaches. Thanks for listening.